uh, for which he would have been scheduled to attend and release it afterwards. Question number two, Honourable Tohanare. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. What reports has he received on progress in building economic growth? Honourable Bill English. What did you say? Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, this week I've received Treasury's latest monthly economic indicators report, which shows the outlook for the economy is looking more positive, following a robust 1.5 per cent increase in GDP in the December 2012 quarter. Uh, and also the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research's business opinion survey out today shows confidence up uh, moderately in the March quarter to a three-year high, pointing to growth of around 3 per cent a year. I might point out that in the calendar year 2012, New Zealand grew 3 per cent and Australia, with its mining boom, grew 3.1 per cent. Speaker. Supplementary question, Honourable Tohanare. Mr Speaker, what are some of the main con contributions to the improving outlook? Wow. Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the Treasury reports a range of indicators looking reasonably positive. Uh, commodity prices in March uh, had the third strongest rise on record, driven by, the, by dairy prices. Manufacturing and services industry indexes have both risen strongly. So there's clearly not a crisis in manufacturing when it's growing. Uh, consumer confidence, business confidence and firms' reported outlook for activity uh, are all around or above long-term averages. And our major, trade, major trading partners, Australia, China, the US and Japan, have generally reported economic data a bit ahead of expectations. Supplementary question, Honourable Tohanare. Mr Speaker, what reports uh, has he received on the government's finances? Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, the government's accounts for the eight months to the end of February uh, show the uh, uh, deficit was $3 billion for the first eight months of the financial year, 556 million lower than the deficit forecast back in December. Uh, this reflects good control of expenditure uh, as, well as, uh, as well as marginally higher revenues. The Crown's operating balance, which records change in the value of all the Crown's activities, include its, including its investments, recorded a surplus of $4.3 billion. Uh, the Government is on track to surplus. Supplementary question, Honourable Tohanare. What independent comment has he seen about the government's economic program? Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I've seen comments from the Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Christine Lagarde, who said of New Zealand, quote, all I can tell you, the IMF is very supportive of what is being done by the government, and quote, if you look at the numbers, whether it's growth, whether it's employment, whether it's inflation, whether it's debt, Overall, it's very stable and it's also very promising. It's certainly a lot better than we see in other parts of the world. And she went on to say the economic policies are supportive of good fundamentals, policies we believe are sound and solid. Sup supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Do the latest financial statements of the government show that while, quotes, total labour force earnings were in line with forecast, this is because, to quote again, the fall in employment has been concentrated at the end of the income scale, meaning the same amount of income was earned by fewer workers. And what further proof does he need to show that income inequality is growing wider and wider under the settings that his government pursues? Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, the mem member is, I think, telling half the story there. As I uh, understand it, what the figures showed was that uh, employment for part-time and young workers reduced. Uh, and it's still a bit of a puzzle because it's likely that one of the reasons it did that is because more of them are going into training. And that, of course, is what that party advocates, that young, young people shouldn't be in low-paid part-time jobs. They should be in training. Well, they're moving from low-paid part-time jobs into training, and I thought he would have supported that. Yeah. Question number three, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. 
But Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of State and Enterprises and asks, have all the risks for...